So the community challenge this week has been using the scribble model. I think a lot of people have cited that it is fun to use, maybe surprising to some people how good it can be as a tool, especially since a new SDXL scribble model was released. I've also found that it really serves as an effective tool for any type of line work. You can use canny processor in it. You can use line art processor in it. You can draw a scribble and use it. It really kind of works with any type of lines. It's very flexible that way. That's what we'll focus on today. Kind of take some suggestions of things that have come up in the challenge that people are interested in seeing how I would uh, approach and explore. And we'll also kind of touch on combining scribble with other control modes like depth. I've got a couple of examples that I prepared ahead of time and played around with just so we can kind of walk through that as a use case. So maybe just to get started while people are uh, kind of getting situated here, um, what Scribble's gonna do is it's gonna give you the ability to, on a black background, use white to kind of rough, uh, rough in a, a quick sketch of the thing that you're trying to generate. It can be pretty loose. Um, you don't have to, uh, you don't really have to have it be as precise as line art. Um, you can, obviously, if you want to get into it. I don't think the um, mechanics of the canvas in this case would be just as good for that type of line art sketch. Uh, but, but effectively, what you're doing is you're drawing a rough structural shape to guide the generation process. So to get started, maybe I'll just do, uh, for whatever reason, I've got um, a windmill in my head. And Don Quixote uh, stuff going on here. Uh, so I'm just going to like rough in a windmill, maybe just like a little horizon here, kind of like mountains in the background. Uh, something like that. And then I'll save that to the gallery. And then we'll go to our control layers. We'll add a control adapter and we'll choose the control net scribble model. Now this is the scribble model that Zinsser released. Um, this is uh, in the commercial product of Invoke by default. You can download this really easily by going to Hugging Face. We'll include links in the details um, chat. You know what to do here and you can, someone else can link the, the repo for folks that are watching uh, along with us. Uh, but I'm gonna put that in as our um, image. I'm going to take the processor off because we don't need the processor. Um, if you find that you're using models and the processor that's selected isn't the one that you would pick, you can edit that in the models section for control nets. You can say which processor you want to use by default. That's a feature in the uh, models section uh, on both the com community edition as well as the commercial product. Um, and we'll turn that off here because we don't need it. And now we'll do a prompt. We'll say maybe a um, an animated cartoon windmill uh, sunset dynamic lighting. Uh, I've got a. I think I've got a 3D uh, Laura in place and mountains in the background. Thank you, chat, for putting the scribble. Uh, repo in the chat. Um, so we're going to do that. I'm probably just going to add in some stuff here just because I like uh, using regional guidance when I can. Uh, let's just draw our windmill in and kind of activate these regions. I'm not being super, super picky about precision because I'm not doing uh, auto negative on these. Uh, we'll do mountains, uh, mountains in the distance, um, and maybe we'll do some like uh, wild, wildflower valley. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna leave this at one. I'm I'm almost guaranteeing you that that's not gonna look that good. Um, mainly because when you have it at one, it's going to be really rigid to your scribble. And when you lower it, it'll give it a little bit more flexibility. So I'll do it at one, uh, and we'll see what that generates. And then I'll generate another one in the, 
uh, background at 0.6 while we're looking at this one. Uh, so it's loading up the model, uh, and then we'll see that get generated. Um, the nice thing about this uh, type of model, I think, is it's got a lot of flexibility in the sense that areas that are black are um, basically not information. So it's only looking at the white and kind of inferring from that. So you can leave certain gaps open. Uh, that's not too bad. Uh, it's, it's still pretty good. Um, I think it, I just, I'm just looking for some forgiveness on my like uh, scribble there, which I think I'll get at a lower, uh, lower strength. Okay, so we lowered the strength and we've got a uh, relatively decent windmill. The, the shape on this is a little wonky, although that's because of my sketch. Um, I actually think I like this one better as far as adhering to what I was looking for. I've got the mountains in the background. I've got this. Probably the real the real answer is just draw better, right? Um, I think the someone's calling out when I turned this down, the mountains are not mountains anymore. Um, one thing that I'll I'll note here is that with regional guidance, when you're not using auto negative. Um, and I, and I've seen this like come up in conversation with people where people misunderstand what regional guidance is doing by default. If you turn off auto negative, you are saying there are going to be mountains in this region. You're not saying this is the only place there are mountains. Mountains can't be anywhere else. You're activating kind of like mountain attention in those pixels. That's kind of like the rough, um, way to think about it and so it's a really good way of nudging things of guiding it and kind of saying hey here's where this is this is where this is going to be you can kind of like turn it up a little bit in those areas but as we noticed uh here it it's obviously not the only place that there were mountains in this image you know we got a little bit of like these like hillish type rocks that are not the actual mountains in the background that it kind of added when the scribble strength was low when the scribble strength high, it's kind of forcing the overall perspective and structure. I, again, I like this one a little bit better, but we now get those kind of mountains in the background and all of this kind of um, stuff around it. So, you know, you can kind of see how this works. If we were to bring this even lower, I'm assuming that we might even lose our windmill. Um, at a certain point, you're bringing the strength so low that you're arguably not using a scribble at all. And you're kind of just putting general shapes in places, right? Um, which is another thing that you can do. Um, I've got a few questions that I'll try to catch up on. Is Scribble pretty much what Sketch uh, in Paint, Sketch in Paint is in Auto 11.11? I could never get this feature to work right in A11.11. I don't know. I don't use it. Uh, mountains are interestingly. We already talked about that. Uh, draw better is not an available solution for everybody. I think everybody can improve their drawing skills, but I hear uh, that, yes, this may not be uh, the right right tool for everybody. Uh, somebody calls out that they do drawing in Photoshop and usually bring it into the app. I think that's what most artists do when they're using tools like this. Um, Scribble, again, is a model that works really well for any type of uh, image that you're bringing in. If you're bringing in something, though, that is like a sketch, uh, a line art sketch, Typically, what you'd want to do is use the line art processor just to make sure that it's got the black background and then the white foreground here. Um, yeah, if you want mountains only in that region, taking out of the main prompt would help. Yes, it also might hurt as well. If there's like not, if there's not going to be mountains in the image, it might be hard to get the region to just jam in the mountains. So it's kind of one of those uh, things where maybe that works, maybe it doesn't. Uh, someone had a side question. We're working on gallery. You export gallery to zip. Wondering in future up. Okay, we will focus on that later because it's a little bit less relevant to what we're talking about now. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So I think most of that uh, we got some answers to. I'll just show for the sake of example what this looks like when we add in a canny. Uh, so we'll go back here. Uh, so this is our canny. Um, and what we could do if we wanted to is take that canny to the canvas uh, and fix up 
things that we don't like in here, right? So we can bring this in and maybe we want to take out some of the clouds. I'm just going to edit those out. Ackerman. Uh, take these guys out. I like those. I'm just, I'm curious to see what happens if I just take out the top of the windmill entirely. It's my weakest, my weakest part of this. I'm just going to take that out and we'll save this to the gallery and bring it back in. Now we're really going off the rails here, um, but hopefully, hopefully it's still good. Um, we're going to just send it and see what we get. Um, yeah, I think it gave us, gave us some windmill stuff. Okay, the strength is really low on this, so let's bring this back up to one. So uh, yeah, weight is low, weight is low. Okay, feeling good, feeling good. What's, it's very weird though. <coughs> Something's funky. Something's funky here because that looks, that looks a little bit too similar. Thinking maybe I need to like rebring that in and we'll try that generating. Oh, you know what? Someone asked if I have fixed seed. Okay, I don't have a fixed seed. Don't have a fixed seed. That was weird though. Something's weird here. I don't like it. I don't like it. Maybe it's my um uh, maybe it's these. No, I think maybe it's maybe it's the the regional uh controls. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that may be it. Let's see. Let's do a little let's do a little comparison here. No, it's too similar. It's too similar. The shape is too similar. I agree. <clears throat> uh, let's try this. Let's add this again. Uh I'm almost wondering, almost wondering if there's like a cache thing going on. Yeah, blame the cache. That's exactly right. You, you, you and me are thinking the same thing, Vic. Yeah, something's funky. Yeah, something's funky there. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. Uh, we are going to, how can I re-update the cache? Hmm. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Uh, maybe I just changed the prompt and it'll probably change it. So we'll do just a comma at the end. Maybe it'll change it. So it could be thinking that it needs to process this <laughs> to add a wipe cache button. Uh, disable guidance. And we're getting all these pretty windmills. Uh, maybe we do this. We can do this. This is right. This is right. We'll just change the the control adapter settings and it will update, I'd say. No, it did not. It still thinks that's in the, that's the image somehow. Love that. Love that. Maybe maybe we uh delete this, generate one without it, add one in, try it again. The uh, the risks of working on the main branch. Okay, we'll do line art. Still getting that in there. Try line art. There we go. 
go. That's not no. Still, still got it. It's the the beautiful hint of our pat. We are, we are not unburdened by where we have been. Uh, we have this locked in. We are locked in on this design. I've altered all the windmills in the world with this one sketch. This is windmills now. Uh, well, you know, I think maybe this is just a sign we should probably move on from the windmills, uh, move on to something else. So we'll, we'll do that. We're going to go to the canvas. We're going to create a new sketch. Uh, and maybe, uh, let's see, what do people want us to try drawing this time around? Are there anything, is there anything that people who've been doing the community challenge have been unable to do or have questions about when it comes to this? <clears throat> No, nope, no questions. Okay. Well, then maybe I'll show you some examples of things I've been playing around with, because uh, I think that'd be just as cool. So I generated this. We got this like cool, weird looking skull creature thing. And I took the depth mask of it. Uh, and basically what I started to experiment with was uh, putting scribble on top of that to add details. And so uh, basically took in uh, this and kind of drew in like a horn and stuff like that. And so I will uh, maybe remix this and show you what I've got here. So I've got uh, the depth image in the background controlling at about a 0.7 strength for the beginning. So it's kind of using the depth to get a lot of the initial structure of the image and then kind of letting the details rise up out of the scribble. So the scribbles where a lot of those details uh, are coming in. Uh, somebody asked, how did you know where to draw? And this is where I took it out into Affinity and edited uh, the scribble on top of that and then brought the scribble back in. Um, but with the upcoming canvas updates you'll be able to do this directly on the canvas so this is kind of like a sneak peek of the types of problems that we're trying to solve with the new canvas is basically being able to do this type of uh, combined control management directly on the canvas where you can edit the control layer directly on uh, the regions that you're producing assets for and switch back and forth easily between control change uh, updates and then uh, the actual base image that's going into the initial image process and being able to do that iteratively just like you're doing that today within painting. So that's kind of the intent of where the canvas is going. But right now, uh, this is something that I did in Affinity and brought in just so that I'd have both of those layers um, and I could overlay those directly on the control layers uh, themselves. So I've got the depth, I've got the scribble, um, I've got kind of like my details here. And so uh, what I can do is I can kind of like use the regional guidance to provide almost like text, texture and material control in some sense. Um, so I can take this and either using the positive prompt or images um, kind of control what's going in in certain spots. And so I'm actually going to take out a lot of this stuff. I'm going to take out the like the subject matter and I'm just going to use regional guidance to see if I can control that. Um, I'm going to take this original thing here and use that as my IP adapter. Uh, and we'll paint that uh, here. Maybe. Uh, and we'll do some, maybe some text, um, a space suit here. And maybe I'll even use an image in addition to that space suit thing. 
Let's see what's that there at a lowish weight. I don't know what I'm going to get. It's part of the fun. Uh, so we'll see how this works for us. If we get a windmill, though, it's time to, it's time to get a new job. That's what I'm saying. If we get a windmill out of here, we're only generating windmills from here on out. In, in before VRAM crash, nope, too powerful. Okay, we got some interesting stuff going on here. Remember, we got no guidance coming from the text prompt. This is all image prompt uh, only, which is fun. A uh, little bit too, a little bit too non-specific, maybe. Uh, we don't have a lot of details coming in from this, so maybe what we want to do is some more structural stuff. Maybe we want some prompt. Maybe we want some prompt. Uh, we'll do like a uh, skull, futuristic skull creature, rodent like. All I did was move up the depth a little bit further. Maybe this will give us a little bit more. Somebody said the cracks look like the windmill. Please don't tell me that's true. We're gonna have to do some. We're gonna have to do some testing here. I think that windmill's like burnt, burned and baked in. That's more what I'm talking about. Look at that thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, somebody noticed that. Um, so I tried to add. This crack here is not the windmill. This is a, a horn that I tried to add, but you'll notice that the horn was missing from the depth, right? So the depth doesn't have a horn, and that's why it, that's not going to do actual like substantive um, changes. That was actually something that I, I noticed in my early testing was that that was going to be really hard to do, um, especially if you don't have like a prompt for it. You might have to lower the depth quite a bit and rely more on kind of like the early stuff. Um, so my most successful horns, just because now that somebody's called it out, uh, this was attempt number one, didn't turn out very well. Best attempt was probably this one, which has this nice kind of like, you know, 3D ridge. So it definitely like picked that up. Um, I think there was even, yeah, that was, that was not as good. I think that's probably the best one here. This one had like, definitely was there, but it looked a little bit more like it was coming down out of like some growth on the head. So I think this was def definitely the best of what I'd had. This, I believe had the depth, uh, very, very low, uh, on the end step. And so basically what it did was it gave the raw structure, uh, to the image by focusing on that. And then it kept the scribble. So we can try adding in a horn here. Uh, so we'll do a single horn made of bone. We'll even plus plus that. Uh, uh, ridged depth, shadow, whatever. And I'm going to take the not or negative off that. Uh, so we'll try, try to get that in. So we brought the end step down to 30%. And so you'll actually watch this as it's a denoising. The first few steps, it'll kind of like force there to not be a horn because the depth image is kind of coming. Uh, and then after about, you know, 30%, it'll kind of loosen up and shake, and you'll see that depth map end, and the horn will start to get a little bit more pronounced, hopefully. Uh, didn't really seem to like do it as much on this one. We are getting some cool skulls, though. That's nice. Yeah, I still don't have that horn, right? But what you can do, obviously, always go to the Unified Canvas. 
uh, and with a single horn on its head. And we can zoom in. And hopefully get that to turn into a horn. It's going to take a little bit of work, I think. Uh, but we can get there in time. And it doesn't like that. Doesn't like that. We'll do plus plus on the horn. Just eliminated our horn. Still doesn't like that horn. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough one. Maybe we can use that image as a control image. Let's try that. I'm also using Euler Ancestral. Euler Ancestral. I don't. I, don't, I should not be using that. Um, so we're going to lower our steps, bring up our CFG. That's probably a factor of this as well. Um, CFG too low, too low. We will turn off the processor here and loosen that down to maybe like 0.75. Actually, that we're going to need to re- process this maybe yeah we'll do that we'll do that still doesn't like that someone said turn up the denoise that's what i'm gonna have to do but i've got to balance this a little bit you gotta balance this a little bit Ooh, we got a lot of suggestions here I appreciate all these suggestions. Let's see. Uh, change IP adapter to composition only, maybe. I mean, style, turn up your denoise, use the eraser where the horn will be under the mask. Uh, canny works. So somebody said canny maps don't work with scribble from my experience. It works great with the SDXL scribble that just came out. The new SDXL scribble has uh, basically all all types of lines supported, both thick, uh, you know, chunky lines like a scribble, as well as stuff that's like line art. It's it's definitely good in that regard. Um, but I think we're probably struggling here on actually getting it to understand where I want the horn. That's like the biggest challenge. So. How do I want to handle that? Maybe, maybe the thing to do here is add in some of the uh, shading. Uh, so we're seeing All right, so we're doing that. Um, we're gonna take this low. The denoising strength is too high. We won't get anything else there. Okay, we're getting we're getting there. We're getting there. I got a little bit of that ridge from that, which is good. Um, so maybe I'll turn this down even a little bit more, and we'll get some more horn going here. It's always good to be able to add those types of things in. That's a little bit too much. Bring this back up. Discard that. Let's bring this back into the control so it kind of picks up those edges. And what we could also do at this point, if we like the depth of that. Okay, we're getting closer to what I'm looking for here. It's a little weird, but we might like it. Not quite, not quite yet. Let's discard that. What we could do is we could take depth. Now that we've got this in such a way that it's gonna try to pick up that ridge, you can actually see it on that. Uh, we can use that to guide it rather than the lines itself, because the lines might be confusing it. Um, and this will give us a little bit more of like a pronounced ridge because of the depth information there. 
Oh man, that's a an interesting thing. I almost like that. Uh, a weird mouth almost. Uh, this is getting to be a little bit of a weird creature, but I actually think that this could be kind of a cool idea. Um, like opening this up to be a mouth and then having that be like a, a horn out of it. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Maybe an eye here. Yeah, we like that. We like that. Okay. Let's see if it actually picks that up. In the depth that we're going to keep the denoising a little bit low here here's going to have to just like deal with my desire to get a little funky here it's uh it's kind of fun take some of that stuff out and just kind of like give this a go and see if we can get this uh get this going here now we've kind of like deviated from the scribble a little bit but uh, we're having fun. So that's, that's what matters here. Now we're just trying to, yeah. Someone said now, now you just try to give us nightmares. Uh, exactly. Uh, perfect. I love this. I love where this is going. We're going to zoom in now on just this region and do a depth. And we're going to do a futuristic skull monster made of bone mouth gaping with large teeth. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kind of zooming in and focusing on just this area right here. Uh, we just do big monster eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay. His face has a face. That's right. Uh, as someone said, this is how inspiration strikes. That is true. Love this. Uh huh. Good little monster, man. Okay. So that's how you do it. That's how you do it. Uh, we've got our horn. Now there's a little monster in his head where there's that hole. Uh, super cool. And all because we started from a scribble. So that's fun. Uh, so we'll save that to the gallery uh, and cherish it forever. Look at that. Can't beat that. Look at that little monster. We love it. We love it. Iron lung, lung looking forehead fish. Super cool. Uh, there's definitely some like weirdness on this that we could like tweak and poke and prod if we wanted to, but. Uh, you get the idea. I think I'd probably fix some of these teeth, maybe take out some of these holes that I don't think have a purpose. Uh, where are the other Im imperfections? I think everything else is pretty good. Yeah, somebody's got oh, that is good. That is good. Yeah, someone's calling out. It's got a mouth on the side of its cheek as well. It's got so many mouths. It's a truly a uh, monstrous creature. The other thing that I did was I've got this, this gent here, uh, and I did a little scribble on top of him. Uh, and we got, you know, some like details coming in of various things. I used regional prompt to make this like a rat goblin at one point. Uh, but you can kind of see the idea of how that would work as well. Uh, different ways of controlling. This is obviously the first try where the settings were way too high and wrong. Uh, but you get, you get the idea of like how that can work. Um, but I don't have to do that example unless people would like to see it. If there's something that you all want to see, I'm just make sure that I didn't miss any questions. Uh, I did miss some questions. Someone asked, they missed the beginning. What is the challenge? 
we originally started by focusing on the scribble control nut here. Uh, and then we've kind of like taken a little bit of a tangent playing around with other stuff. Uh, so that is what we're doing right now. Uh, yep. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's just do another scribble then. Let's do another scribble. We'll go to the canvas, edit this back out. Uh, let's see, what did we not do? We've done characters. I think this is fully black. Uh, we've done characters. Did a windmill. Uh, what else could we do? I've got I've got some ideas. Um, let's just do some like general shape. So foreshortening, somebody said. Foreshortening. Uh, can you do someone punching the camera with cracks in the camera? Man, someone's really confident. Someone's really confident in my drawing abilities here. Uh, let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot, okay? So we're gonna do some cracks. Uh, maybe too far away. Okay. Um, let's do a fist. Just drawing with my mouse here, so we're all going to be very gracious about this sketch. Be very nice to this poor man on the screen who's having to draw this live. And. Uh, we're going to save that out. Is it a fist? Who's to say? Uh, we're going to add in our control layer, add in our scribble, throw it on in, take out the processor. So now we've got our skills of an artist on display. Uh, we're going to do a fist. Whoop. This right there, take out the auto negative. Cracks in glass, broken window. We're gonna just do that all around there. And then we are gonna do a, let's take out this little uh, photograph of a fist punching a glass window, uh, broken glass foreshortening effect. Uh, studio photography. Editing. We'll see. We'll see if that works. Uh, we'll Turn this down a little bit to 0.8. We'll see. Someone said that with something like this, they take picture references. So you're doing this freestyle, uh, which is more power to me. We got something. We got something. <laughs> Woo! Man. That is something. That is something. Uh, we don't have an arm for this hand, but the fist itself is punching through the screen <laughs> a little bit. Somebody said that's better than I expected, honestly. Uh, yeah, this is. This will do. Um, 
We're going to turn down the strength a little bit and see if we can. We just we're lacking an arm. We're lacking an arm. Uh, that's the big problem. I didn't draw the rest. <laughs> I didn't draw the rest. Uh, so, yeah, this is close. I think you'd probably, if you were using this in work, uh, you'd take this and put this over somebody who's, like, behind it, right? So you've got somebody in the far back, and then you've got the fist up front. Uh, and some, doing something like that. I can, I can see this still being useful. Um, maybe, maybe we can try to get somebody, um, a man punching the window. Uh, and we'll kind of like do him back here of a man's fist punching a glass window try to like give it some <laughs> more to work with there instead of just saying there's a fist get a man well, now we've got the arm but it's coming out from over here uh we've got like a bottom thumb and a side thumb uh, it's okay i mean the, the arm definitely looks weird but uh We still are not getting that man, so let's try this. I have a feeling this is our control adapter's fault. We may need to we may need to go in and draw our guy. because uh, our guy is is missing from our sketch. That's the hard problem here. Yeah, now we've got a side a side arm. I'm just gonna delete that. Okay. Let's go back to the canvas. We're gonna draw a little dude back here. Uh, we're gonna guy. Uh, we've got a guy's nose. We've got a guy's eyes. He's maybe angry. Yeah. Okay. We got our little little gent here, uh, and we're gonna bring him back in. And angry man face. Back over here and erase this and tighten it up a little bit. Uh, this one says it's going to be Popeye. Very well could be. Someone said the thumb is in the wrong spot. Not the most attractive, man. It's getting there though. We're getting we're getting there. Uh for the type of ske sketch that I drew, it's not too too bad. Uh maybe some areas we'd need to fix. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go to canvas. I think we can I think we can salvage this this gent right here. Uh Let's pick up that control nut that was there from before. Let's put this guy's shirt on. Uh, let's maybe do this control. Let's go back to scribble. I'm going to take the whole thing as the scribble. Uh, it's a line art. That's fine. Uh, we'll keep this down a little bit because it's going to have some things we don't like. But what I want to do is just give this guy's shirt back. So we're gonna kind of get that color in place here. And then we'll fix his face later. So someone said, uh, maybe not a photograph, so you have more artistic latitude. That's fair. Um, do another pass of this just to get the shirt color. Uh, it is what I'm doing here is by using this control I'm making sure that that texture is still there of like the, the crack itself um, but now I'm kind of like forcing that color in that spot and so I'm able to get that effect that I'm looking for 
Um, now we need to fix this guy's like right hand side. And so that I probably will just delete this for those purposes here. And do some light denoising over here on the side. I have a feeling something's like baking that control image in there. Oh, there we go. That's what we want. Okay, and then we'll just fix this guy's face. How about that? Do we like, do we like, is it a crazy face? Okay, that looks better. All right, so we've got our like guy punching the glass here. Uh, all in all, for the challenge, come on, I think it's pretty good. It's gonna, this is gonna be one of those like, we all know what this is used for, and it's like Doug Law on your side personal injury lawyer punching the glass fighting for you justice uh and cash like this is like the 1-800 call me i'm a lawyer fighting image right like that's what this is for perfect i don't think it could be better uh and if we compare it to the sketch i mean wow nailed it right definitely angry yeah we get we did it we crushed it uh so i think that's challenge accepted uh <laughs> so i said it's pretty amazing how the emoji face turned into a real man i do think it's maybe worth analyzing that um you know the way to think about scribble right is that it's it's already designed by the way it was trained to really look at this as a loose association with the edge D different than a canny because canny is basically saying the edge is here 100 percent, it's right here because of the way scribble was trained it's basically saying thicker lines are basically a larger area of ambiguity for the edge. It's the edge is somewhere in the, the boundaries of this line. Thicker lines means more variation. Smaller lines means basically like I know exactly where the line is, right? So you're basically creating the probability distribution of where the edge is by the thicker line. And so in this case, you know, I've got a decent line around certain pieces. And it's, it's kind of using that, I mean, I will, I will say my intent here was this is more the lips and this is kind of like that, you know, lower, lower lip line thing, which it interpreted that as his mouth is open. And that was kind of like the top of his tongue, but it effectively still met the criteria, right? It kind of aligned a little bit to where his nose is, his eyes, the, the lower weight, um, the lower weight on this is also a, a factor. The lower the weight, the more it kind of has some freedom to even go outside the lines, right? So it's all a little bit of a uh, loose uh, connection between these things. But you can see like the line of these cracks lines up here, right? There's a little bit of, a little bit of that change when we in paint it over on the right hand side. The lines of the hand, obviously this, was interpreted not as the thumb in this one image, and the thumb is definitely a little funky. We could fix up that. Um, but you get the general idea, like Scribble is like a useful uh, tool for loosening the constraints a little bit and having a little bit more flexibility. Somebody asked, if you used grayscale, could you make an even uh, more complex probability distribution? Uh, not with Scribble as it's trained right now. Scribble's not trained on grayscale, but I think this is an interesting conversation about how future control nets could work. Uh, really control net models are just kind of like very complicated before and after 
training relationships. And so if you can reliably create a data set that shows before and after of any type of information, right? You could train a control net that does that thing. So if we had uh, a data set that had some amount of like grayscale in it, that was teaching it that that means something, uh, it could learn that relationship. Right now, the only model that I'm aware of that has grayscale information is the depth model. And what that means in the depth model is as I go towards white, it's closer to the screen. As it goes towards black, it's further away from the screen. Um, unlike with the scribble model, the depth model does not have a null information state, right? So with canny or with any of the edge and line models, black doesn't mean there's nothing here. It means I don't have any information here, fill in the rest, right? And so white is the only signal in those models. That's a little bit different with depth because there is no null information state. There's not a put black here. That doesn't mean there's anything here because black actually means there's just very deep. It's very far away, right? So there's a, a lot of complexity with how these different models are trained and work. Um, if you use open pose as an example of something that's very different than any other model, uh, let's just do that as an example, just to see um, what that looks like. Let me get our gent here to, yeah, he got, he got caught, he got posed. Uh, so this, this model, right? The open pose model is just training the model to understand that this is where heads are. This is where necks are. These are where shoulders are. Like it is, it is now understood the color relationship between different things, but you could train a control net to do anything to learn any relationship between before and after you could have it so that if you, um, you know, put orange on a canny, right. Orange could be some additional type of information, right? Maybe it's, uh, uh, lower strength detail or something like that, but you'd be effectively training a new control net model at that point. So I'm a little bit of a tangent on the machine learning side, but yes, it's, it's one of the cool things about control net is as long as you build a data set that creates that relationship, machine learning model could learn that relationship and you could use it as a tool, which I think is very cool. Um, somebody said it would be good if someone made a depth model that had null info shade. I agree with that. And if you could make a, like a orange dropout zone that'd be very useful, I think, for a lot of people who are using depth models. Um, okay, so we've got a couple minutes left for any questions. If nobody starts typing any questions, then we'll conclude and call it a day. And hopefully you picked up some stuff on the scribble. Um, some fun things that are coming on uh, the channel in the next few days. We had a conversation with uh, Matthew Sag, a pretty well-known uh, intellectual property uh, law professor who's specifically focused on AI and ML and how uh, machine learning models and copyright and all that stuff is interplaying right now. Uh, so we've got that interview coming up in the next week or so. Um, we already recorded it. We just have to get it uh, put up. And I think we've got another uh, studio session next week. So we'll do that then. Um, I see one person typing. If they've got a question, I'll answer it. Otherwise, we'll call it a day. Uh, well, just to review, uh, I think something else I'll call out while people are typing. Um, coming soon to a release near you, we've got some changes to boards, and uh, we now have a search function here. So um, I can do skull, and I get all of my... Uh, images that have uh, skull in the prompt metadata. Uh, you can basically search all the metadata using that search bar that is coming soon, uh, along with some other cool gallery changes. It'll make it easier than ever to use Invoke, uh, manage all your work. Cool. Uh, someone said they were just typing for a while to make me think I had that they had a question. They didn't want the stream to end. Um, I enjoyed the live chat with everybody. Uh, feel free to poke with any questions after the uh, live session drops off. Uh, we will see you next time. It's been fun. Take care. Bye-bye.